I stand before you today, brethren, to tell you that we are appointed to things that are greater and higher than the things of this world and its lusts. Ephesians 3, verse 6 says, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. We have promises, brethren. And we are in a unique position in where we can look forward to greater heavens and earth, yet we experience and partake of them as we travel along in our, earth, in our lives here in this earth. So if we sit back and think a moment at this, how are we who are in the flesh, were once sinners against God, able to partake of these promises? And I will tell you this is how, the gospel. The gospel initiates hope of the future with God, yet giving us first fruits of that in this life as well. See, men can promise and often never fulfill what they have promised. However, God promises to fulfill. So the issue was never if God was able to carry through giving a people the necessities in order to save them. It was the fallen state of man that had prevented them from partaking of his promises. Sin was an enmity between God and man that prevented spiritual interaction between them. Righteousness cannot dwell or mingle with unrighteousness, so neither could the dark nature of man be mingled with the pure holiness of the Father. So the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and obeying the will of the Father, he sacrificed himself, rose again, is now our intercessor, and will come again to receive his own. So brethren, the wall of partition has been broken down. We are no longer in this state of enmity between God. We have a savior who has brought us good news. He has given us the gospel. Good news such as freedom from sin. This freedom of sin enables us to partake of these promises. Ephesians 2 verse one, and you hath he quickened, who was dead in trespasses and sins. More good news is a good riddance of the flesh. We, have, we are yet awaiting a future transformation that will rid us of all the hindrances that we have now. Philippians 3, verse 20 through 21. For our conversation is of heaven, from whence we also look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body now and liken it unto his glorious body, according to the workings whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Also, brethren, good news is eternal life. This showing the gospel wasn't just to get us into Christ, but to continue us on so that we can live with him eternally. John 10, verse 10, The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I am come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. So God has given us many good things. And because of this gospel, we are able to partake of the promises of God from the moment we believe in it on to eternity. I wanted to close with a passage from our brother Paul in his letter to the Thessalonians. But we are bound to give thanks always, God, for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth, whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good work and deed.